Hey everybody, this is Michelle from Milton Public Library and we are here today with Victor and Mark and we are going to talk about unity. But before we get started and before we actually break into our questions, I wanted to let you know about a great opportunity we've got going on at the library right now. Um, our topic today is unity and it really fits with what I want to talk to you about, which is the fact that we have a multi-generational puzzle project going on. And we are inviting anybody between the ages of 12 and however old people are <laughs> to take part in this. And what you're invited to do is take home a puzzle piece, which is, I'll show you the back of this one, which is not too, too big. And you're invited to decorate it with whatever you think unity means to you. You can use any kind of medium you'd like. Um, you can use paint, you can use things that need to be glued on, you can use markers, you can use uh, decoupage with you know, magazines and glue, you can, you can do anything at all you'd like. So um, we'd love to have you take part in it. Our puzzle will be displayed in our back room here eventually when people are able to come back into the library, they'll be able to see it and enjoy it. Um, and we'll be sharing it on social media until that happens. So anyway, these are some of the pieces that have already been submitted. And yeah, I'm going to start with mine first. But anyway, um, <laughs> this one is mine. And I just used a bunch of ribbons and glued them together and then cut it out in the shape of the puzzle. And I wrote, I have this quote on it by Harold Becker. It says, beyond the perception of differences, are the interwoven threads of love that connect us all. Um, this is another one done by a team and it's two hands. I'm not sure if it goes that way or that way, but it makes no difference. It's two hands holding each other's hands and it's very well done, very nicely thought out. This one is done by one of our adult patrons and it is, these are um, hands coming down from the earth and the roots are connected to those hands. There are hearts in the hands. And then the tree is um, actually has a lot of hearts on it here and here as well, hearts in the sky. And the sun is also shaped like a heart. And that one is very, very pretty and thought out, well thought out too. This one is by one of our other um, employees, one of our staff members. This is Mary Betts and hers is a peace sign and it has community, inclusion, diversity, equity, and peace written on it. And she has some flowers glued on it as well. And this one, we have another one that's been submitted, but it wasn't quite completed. So I believe she's in the process of doing that. This is another one that was just submitted today. And it actually shows um, a number of the um, things that we have offered at the library which bring all sorts of people from all sorts of walk together to enjoy the programs that we have. So it too is very fitting. And these will eventually be placed on our wall, like I said. Uh, there is another one I can't show you because it's on display outside right now. And it too is a multicolored um, segmented piece that has unity written on it. So those are some ideas and we'd love to have especially the teens um, participate in this because we do want some representation from some younger people. So anyway, if you're interested, give us a call at 893-4644 and we'll have a, a puzzle put on the curbside pickup for you in the back. You've got until March 8th to complete it and then return it. And there are some rules, some guidelines in that we um, have put in with the puzzle piece so you're not totally in the dark once you get it. So. Anyway, moving on today with Mark and Victor, we are going to talk about unity, as I said before. And you know, in our lives, we all encounter differences in people all around us. We know that there's an awful lot of division in our world right now, which is extremely sad and is tearing some of us apart. Um, some people we embrace and some we don't because we don't oftentimes understand maybe where they're coming from and maybe they threaten us somehow with their beliefs or whatever. And, but I, had, I think that if we really step back and look at things, if we realize that our passions and our interests may be different from somebody else's, often our desires 
are actually quite similar. And so in order to come to some more common understanding, we got to learn how to bridge those gaps and how we can, how can we learn to communicate? How can we break down those barriers and how can we celebrate the differences? Because we all have something awesome to share with each other. So that's the topic, topic of our conversation today. And I'm going to now introduce Mark and Victor and have them um, tell us a little bit about themselves. So which of you would like to go first? <laughs> I can start. I, I feel like I always like to start. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm Victor. Uh, I'm from Jersey originally, um, but I'm up here in Vermont. Um, Mark and I are medical students. We're just volunteering our time, trying to give advice and our inputs on things. And uh, if you watch the rest of the series, there's a lot going on. We've talked about a lot of different topics. Um, if you haven't, I do recommend going back and watching them. I think we've covered a lot of cool things. But yeah, um, yeah, that's kind of who I am. <laughs> Thank you. I'm Mark, also a second, soon to be third year medical student with Victor at UVM. And um, I'm from Ohio originally, moved to Vermont for school. And then as I'm starting the third year, I'm going to be doing rotations in Connecticut. So I'm kind of all over the place. <laughs> happy, happy to talk. All right. Awesome. And these guys have a big test coming up. So we're hoping that they do really well with it. I'm sure that they've been studying long and hard and have learned and have used some of the things that we've talked about in some of our press, past presentations. So. Um, anyway, so our first question today is, what is an open mindset and how do we get started? Yeah, um, I can start this. So what is an open mindset? Um, I would say an open mindset is kind of exactly, you know, what it, what it kind of, what it says there, open, open as in um, wanting to take in, right? An open mindset is saying yes and. Um, not saying like, no, not saying, not looking for differences, not looking for problems uh, that you can find, but rather the, rather the, the openness of it, I guess. I don't, wanna, I don't wanna define open by open, but it's kind of a hard word to say in that, in that scenario that it is, I'm at a loss for words now. This almost never happens. But it was like non-judgmental. I feel like that's how I would talk about it. Is that like an open mindset is about just hearing what, you know, or seeing things or hearing things and trying to, you know, like come at it without inserting like, you know, the whatever is your underlying, like your gut reaction about it, whether it's from what you were taught growing up or, you know, just what you think. Like, if there's a scenario where something's going on, just to try to come in and like be present with it. And if you want to think about it really hard, like kind of do that later. But in, like, in that moment, just try to have like a non judgmental approach. And that's the yeah. open approach. To feed off that, I guess also, like, one thing else I want to add is, um, it's slow to judge, right? I feel being open is coming from a place of, you know, I, as I was saying, like you want to learn, right? And if you are slow to judge, you are slow to view others as not self, right? There's like a self versus not self. Like that's how we build our in-groups and whatnot. Um, it's a psychology term. I'll try not to throw out too much psychology terms out here, but, um, you know, the slower we are to judge, the slower we are to see people as different right if we we constantly look for um the similarities right that's how you build the openness okay so similarities you mean perhaps in what ways what okay so obviously you know i don't look like you either one of you so are you talking similarities in the way we look or the way we act or maybe what we like what exactly are you talking about when you say similarities yeah um, I think it kind of goes into what we'll be talking about a little later with like, what is diversity and whatnot, but similarities can be almost anything, right? Similarities can be, um, like how, how Mark and I first, you know, got together and joined this project. We just like, 
we go to class together, right? That is a similarity we share. And then once we like started hanging out more, we're like, oh, we also like to watch movies. We have this thing called a cage a thon where it's just uh, Mark, I, and my friend Jason just get together and watch terrible Nicolas Cage movies, <laughs> right? Like that is a similarity that you would never see just by looking at either of us, but it's something that we can find. And like now a similarity that I have, I have with you, Michelle, is that now we're in this project together. We're in helping the youth. Like it is beyond just the visual appearances or the location or things like that. That's very physical. Um, similarities can be, can be physical for sure. Like I look just like my dad. That is a similarity we share. But I, you know, have the same inflection of my voice as my mom, which is different, you know, and it's, um, yeah, I think there's so many layers that go into what makes us different, but also what makes us the same. Okay. Mark, yeah. do you have anything to add? A perfect answer. You know, it's just like and anything street you grew up on, you know, the like, if, you know, your parents got divorced when you were younger and someone else had that experience, like it's, you know, just things that kind of influence your life, like whatever they are. Yeah. Okay. So I just wanted to make sure that we clarified that before we go on. So um, anyway, so then that, our next question is, what is diversity? I can start with this one. And I guess like the previous question, you know, like I think di diversity is like as expansive as we want to make it. And I guess like ideally, like, you know, we're kind of looking at all these different aspects of, you know, people and groups that kind of like, are part of their experiences that part of making them who they are. And it's like, you know, how, you know, what was your home life like growing up? Like, what is your, you know, just like kind of all these different aspects of someone's identity are diverse aspects that, you know, we might differ, like the experience of me as a man versus someone who is a woman or like someone who is growing up in another country versus growing up in America age, sex, race, religion, like we, we have these kind of things that contribute to like what makes us feel like who we are, right? And then even beyond those kind of demographic categories, there's going back to the point of similarities. I think a lot of diversity also comes from diversity of experiences. And it's like, we, we sometimes think about that as separate, but I think it's kind of like this just like meshing thing where some of the um, diversity, like race, religion, sex, age, some of those things are like, we even think of them as diversity because, you know, we have different experiences sometimes based on that. But it's like anything that's giving us these like broad range of experiences is contributing to our diversity. Good answer. Hey, Victor. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's thinking. He's stumped today. <laughs> yeah, just, just so much uh again for that ready for that test my brain dies sometimes on me i'll be i was playing like dungeons and dragons on friday and i was like trying to come up with my character's voice which i've done for the last year and i'm like i forgot how he talks now <laughs> i do this every friday um anyway uh so what diversity is i think i think mark nailed it but for me like what i think of diversity is is differences and differences not in the negative form right i feel like so many of us think of like oh they're different that's bad Right. Because like even going back to math, right, the difference between these two numbers can be negative. Right. That's that's a very I don't know. I want to say it's like a word based or like it's it's in the the language that we speak, but it's not the true meaning of the word. Right. I think differences have so many uh, possibilities to be positive, but we can talk about that later. So what diversity means to me, it's it's the differences though it's amazing that we have differences but that's what it is right but there's the visual differences right like the color of my skin the the culture I was raised in you know the way I have my hair right, right now it's a full fro and I'm gonna shave it all off this weekend right those are things you can see and those are like what separates me in a crowd like oh no that's Victor I can see him like that's you know that's the di diversity in him but there's also the diversity of that no one sees like that we were talking about before that you know my religion can be something that makes me diverse. My temperament, right? How I carry myself. That's a, a diversity in itself. There's the goals, the aspirations. Like I want to be a doctor, right? That's not what everyone shares. But if I go into a group of people who, you know, someone's a teacher and someone is a painter and then someone is an accountant, right? Like I have a different way of thinking than all of them. I have a different goal. I have a different mindset, right? That's diversity. 
And that is a beautiful thing, right? If, if we're coming together, cause like the town needs to make a huge project and they want, you know, all these different inputs so everyone can be happy, right? If they're just asking all the painters, right? That's, they're just gonna get one set of opinion. I mean, we're gonna talk about that later. I don't wanna get way too much into the topic at, at hand right away, but um, so yeah, it's the differences between people. And, you know, again, like I just wanna make sure that whenever we say different or at least whenever I say different, it's never in a negative form. I think difference is always a great thing. For sure. And I think that we're all, we are all different and we all have something very special to offer everybody. Uh, and I think sometimes within ourselves, we don't even know what that specialness is. And so there is a time of um, really thinking of who you are to know, um, to, you know, maybe drop the boundaries that we set around ourselves and just say, you know, how can I, how can I be, how can I be who I am in certain situations? And I think I won't say anything more either because we are going to be moving on. So, um, and maybe I'll have something more to say later. So anyway, okay, next question. What is privilege? Yeah, I can start with this one because I have, someone once told me this example. I don't know where it came from, but it's the best example I've ever heard of it. Um, privilege is a, so if we think of rate as the world, not the world, as your life as a race, right? Different things. So like you got to run the race, you got to finish the race, the finish line is the starting line. Privilege is kind of like where you start on that line, right? And then there's so many different things that lead into that, right? There is, you know, the term that's going around all the time, that's white privilege, right? But there's so many other things. There's affluent privilege, right? Like my parents grew up uh, in the Caribbean, very poor. I did not grow up poor. I have a privilege that they do not have right? Like I don't have to worry about food security. I don't have to worry about a home, but like they did, right? So that's not a negative thing, but it is a thing that I have to acknowledge, right? So, you know, when my parents say something, I have to make sure I know where they're coming from, right? There's also able-bodied privilege, right? Like I, um, I am able to walk on my own accord, right? That is a privilege I have that not everyone else has, right? There are some people, you know, born with a, uh, a deformity in their leg that they can't walk properly, they need crutches, you know, they just start the race at a different place than me. Eventually, everyone is going to cross that line, right? But the privileges is where you started, right? So when someone says, you know, uh, I am privileged to have this, that just means it's a good thing, right? Just because you have a privilege doesn't mean it's bad, but you should always acknowledge it, right? Just like I was saying that, like, I have to acknowledge my parents. So when my dad yells at me because I didn't feel like finishing my sandwich, right? It was just like, I bought a 12 foot long, I bought a 12 inch long Subway sandwich. I am really nauseous and I don't want to eat that last bit. But for him, when he grew up until he was like 18, he had no money. He was like, no, we don't waste food. I never waste food. We'll hold it on for later. I'm like, it's a crumb. He's like, no, we'll hold it on for later. Right? Like getting into an argument with my dad over that is not meaningful. That's not a meaningful argument. And that has to come from me acknowledging, you know what? I am raised with a privilege that he does not have. So he sees things differently than me, right? There's a difference in that mindset that we were talking about before. And that difference can be good because now my dad, you know, might save an extra dollar or two in the future for eating that little crumb or whatever. Like this is a, just a very basic example, but you know, that's at least for me what privilege is. It's not a bad thing to be privileged. It's not a bad thing to have things that other people don't have. As long as you're always thankful for them and acknowledging it, right? You want to make sure Every, like you see your starting line, you see someone else's starting line, like, hey, how can I get them up to where I am so we can go forward together? That's how I, I define privilege. Okay, good. Mark? Yeah, I have pretty much like the, you know, the same thought, like you kind of nailed the basic definition. It's like, you know, just kind of different ways that we can like have, you know, good things or like kind of, you know, we don't have these like, hardships that other people necessarily go through and we all have different hardships you know um i think some something interesting is like just kind of how like i feel like pri like different privileges like different kind of advantages we have and like you know things that we're we're like lucky and fortunate to like experience they they kind of intersect with like what makes us who we are where like I don't know the right way to frame this. It, like some of the, you know, just like how we were talking about differences before where like 
there's all these different experiences or different parts of you that can kind of make up like the whole of who you are. Like I, th when I think of the idea of privilege, it's more just about like looking around and kind of like taking stock that like we all, we all are different and like coming at it from this non-judgmental place where like we're different and like some things, it's like some things can kind of help us sometimes. Some things can be harder for us sometimes depending on the context. And it's like, it's just kind of understanding that like, we're not all the same person. Like I'm not the same as Victor and my experience in the world might not be the same as Victor's, but like if, if I'm judging the whole world only from my own place, like I'm, I'm gonna miss some things that's going on around me because I'm, I'm thinking that like, that's not how I would do it. And like, you know, that's not how like I would experience it. So like, is that really true what you're telling me? So I think we're just kind of like the idea of privilege, I think like it's good to have appreciation and gratitude, but another way that I use it for myself is just like understanding that like other people experience the world differently than me. And like privilege is just one framework to understand that. You know, there's a lot of different ways we can understand that not everyone experiences things the same way. Exactly. And it's getting to know those people and understanding we've got to we've got to learn to walk in each other's shoes sometimes to experience what they've experienced i can tell you that my my father-in-law lived during the depression and they struggled they struggled he would talk about going to bed at night and waking up with you know a good inch or two inches of, of ice on the inside of their bedroom windows because they didn't have heat that went up into their upstairs um they had a great house but you know they were also very cold at times because you know um, maybe they couldn't afford to heat the whole house maybe only part of the house was heated for the winter um, very very careful you know with his money he was a great grocery shopper and all of that and took very good care of his family but he worked very hard to do that and um, you know uh, and then another, and his brother, who actually saved everything he possibly could and, and worked really hard to, you know, save every penny he could so that he could provide for his family. And they both had nine children and 10 children. So they had, a, they had huge families to take care of. They worked really hard and none of their kids went hungry or without, um, but they were, but they, you know, the parents did work hard. So they had that experience. My husband and, you know, his siblings um, were far more privileged than their father was growing up. And certainly their kids more privileged than what, you know, even they were. And this is the same in, in our household. You know, um, we've never wanted for anything, honestly. We really haven't. Um, so, and it is, it is those gifts that we have to be grateful for because that is what they are. Um, but we have to also remember that not everybody has been as gifted as, you know, in that way as, you know, we are and have to be understanding and, you know, not, how can I put it? I read a book recently and this may be going off track a little bit about this kid um, who is terribly abused as a child, terribly abused. It was the saddest book I have ever read about child abuse. And um, he was never given food. And his parents gave his other siblings food, but he didn't get, she, the mother didn't give him food. And I don't know why. But um, what was my point in bringing that up? I think I've lost my train of thought. Um, it was just so sad. And it was funny how there were some kids even in that family who were more privileged than the young man who wrote the story. So it wasn't a story. It was his biography, but um, it was, and, but he went on, he used what he had experienced to go on and help other people who were being abused. So, you know, um, and that probably just went way off where we're going, but it was just something that I wanted to share that you know, even within own household, sometimes you'll find some privilege more privileged than others for for whatever reason. I, I don't know, but anyway. So, yeah. I, um, go ahead, Mark. I feel like what you just said. I mean, it's kind of like getting to the idea that like, uh, you know, like with diversity and with like these kind of topics, like understanding like 
just like having a framework to like kind of like really the goal is to see like the the goal is to get to know people as well as possible and it's like just to kind of like have a framework to understand that like there's all these different aspects that are making us up and a lot of it is invisible sometimes so it's like really even though there's some visible things like the best way to understand another person is just to get to know them and ask them questions like like you know honest honest seeking questions which will kind of lead into what we'll talk about later but it's you know even like we can talk about the idea like privilege by like wealth or race or ability like those are some aspects but like everyone has a story so I just don't don't want to say that we're ignoring people's stories because we like use a framework that is like you know, like a stere- like kind of classifying things. Like really the, the goal is to get to know people's stories. Mm-hmm. I know where I was going with that. My point was that the, the, guy, the kid, he was 12, I think, when he finally was taken out of that home, but um, he would go to school and he was bullied and he was picked on for the way that he smelled, for the, you know, he, he stole food because he was hungry and he got in trouble and, you know, he was, he just, he had a lot going on in his life. And we from the outside could look at him and go, we could judge him. We could say, oh my gosh, what a loser. Oh my gosh, he smells so bad, you know, and his clothes are all ratty. And we could make a judgment against him very unfairly because we don't know what life he's living. And that's, you know, that, that I guess was the point that I wanted to make that we, when you talk about judgment, we have to be careful not to look at just the surface of people because we don't know what's going on underneath. We don't know what they've experienced. So anyway, did you have anything to add, Victor? Yeah, just that last point um, kind of reminded me of something my sister went through that it took me forever to understand how she was able to get to this place. But um so when she, she's a lawyer now, right? And it's like one of the things I encourage her to be a lawyer. Um, when she was in undergrad, so she was like, what, 18, 19, probably. She's like one of her first years. Her and her friend got mugged in the subway. Mm-hmm. Um, and one of the first things she said when like my dad and I got her, I'm like, hey, are you okay? She's like, yeah. She's like, oh, like, we'll find that guy and we'll go to the bath. He's like, my sister was like, no, like, you don't know what he's going through. Mm. and like my dad and I was like you know I was in like high school at the time I was like what are you talking about that guy's a criminal he stole your stuff and she's like yeah but you don't know what like he could be you know going through a million different things right like yeah he should face the law and whatnot but you know like I don't know it just she was able to come from it from such a clear head that like it took me until like the end of college like much older than she was to like finally understand it's like oh no she's right like like yeah certain people you know, like the the biography we're talking about, yeah, he might seem weird, he might smell, he might steal from the cafeteria, but there might be something on that going on that we don't know, right? And that's the whole thing of privilege, right? So, you know, like, I'm going to acknowledge where I'm at, so I can see people where they're at, right? Because if I'm just acknowledging where I'm at, like, oh, no, that's not okay for me, but that might be what they have to do in that instant. Right, exactly. So, okay. We're going to move on from there because I think we've, you know, talked a lot about that. But so why is diversity important then? You want to start, Mark, or do you want me to go? Sure. I was going to talk about like psychology and philosophy. So it's hard to even start talk about specific questions. I feel like we are just in like a flow with the conversation. Um, <laughs> Yeah, is there a direction I, you'd rather go? Is there no, no. A, you know, okay. I, I'll be like quick. You know, I think Victor touched on it earlier when it was like that we have different experiences, we have different parts of ourselves, and when we bring them together, it's like we're more than the sum of the parts, right? You know, we can come up with different solutions, like in a problem-solving way, you know, different visions in a society way, and you just it like enriches our lives to not have everything be the same, right? So I I think it's it's just like experiencing and kind of having like a greater picture of the world when we have, you know, people with different experiences, like whatever that diversity is. Yeah. Go ahead, um, Victor. So I, I'm not trying to be like too head about it, but so I was a psych major in college and if I had more time and more money I would also would have done philosophy 
I didn't have enough time to finish my philosophy major. Anyway, um, so there's three things I want to bring up real quick about diversity and why I think it's important personally. Um, so there's two psychology things. There is something called a group think and there's something called my side bias. So group think is when everyone is in a group and one person has an idea and no one challenges the idea because they all kind of like agree with it and go with it, right? That is, um, say someone wants pizza and they're like, oh, I really like anchovies and pineapple on my pizza, right? And then you're like, that's disgusting. But everyone else is like, yeah, that sounds great, right? All of a sudden, you know, because there's not a diversity of thinking in that room, you're going to eat the anchovy pineapple pizza that you really don't want to eat, right? It's like the worst thing. That, like, that's just, it sounds gross to me, right? I just don't like it. That's like one of the, like, there's extreme examples I don't want to get into, but like, that is an example of it, right? If there's not enough people in a room that are willing to speak up and say like, no, actually, can we order, you can have your anchovy pineapple, but let's also get a plain, right? And then someone else is like, oh, I also wanted a plain, right? Until you, if you don't have enough people in a room that's thinking differently, saying what they think and like being able, given the space to be diverse and given the space to say their different idea, you know, you might end up eating an anchovy pineapple pizza. And like, if we were to make this like a town, for instance, now like, oh, you know, no one's allowed to walk on the sidewalks now. But like that one guy who doesn't have a car, he's like, no, I really need to walk on the sidewalk. But if there's not a room and space for him to speak up, right? If there's not an area for him to be diverse, an area for him to be different, to be like, hey, I actually, I don't have a car right now. I need to be able to walk on the sidewalk, right? Then he's going to suffer for that, right? So I think that's one of the major things in diversity, right? Being able to give him space, to be different, to say different things, to offer different opinions so everyone as a whole can benefit. Um, another thing is my side bias, right? My side bias comes down to, I am only going to look up things that reinforce my bias. Right, so my bias is, let's go back to the anchovy pizza. I really love anchovy pizza. I don't, in real life, I don't. I am a meat lover's pizza. That's my favorite type of pizza. But let's say that, right? If I only associate myself with people who love anchovy pizza and reading articles on the news about anchovy pizza, right? I'm gonna start like, someone's like, oh, I want a pepperoni pizza. I'm like, oh, that's disgusting. Let me tell you why it's disgusting. I have all these things, right? And you're never given, you're never giving time someone else's opinion. It's very similar to groupthink, but instead of you being the person on the outside, you're the person on the inside. You know, you're hushing everyone else out because all you care about is your, is your opinion, right? So all of a sudden, instead of you being the one that suffers, you're making other people suffer, you know? And that can be alleviated by, you know, looking at other things, uh, expanding your mind. Like, no, let me try the pepperoni pizza. Let me try this type of pizza. And like, all of a sudden now you have a, a wider palate Right. And then, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll be invited to the pizza parties because you'll eat all the pizzas and they don't have to just order your disgusting anchovy. If you like anchovy pizza, I don't mean to say that, like, go enjoy your pizza. Like, I don't want to be undiverse and kick you out of this conversation, but that's, to me, that's not what I like. Um, and I hope you give me the space to do that. Um, and then the last thing, the philosophy thing, it's uh, the theory of thesis, antithesis, and synthesis. I'm not going to explain that. If you want to, email the library and rent a book on it and then you know email me we can have a nice conversation i love philosophy but what it is it's thesis is the idea of how things are antithesis is how things can change and then synthesis is how both of those come together to make a new thing right so kind of going on diversity it's i have an idea of this and that's how we've been doing it forever someone comes like how about we do it this way and you're like i don't agree fully but let's meet somewhere in the middle and go forward right it is a very, very old philosophy, right? This idea of compromising to go forward has been around since, I think it was like, not Aristotle, but like around that time. Um, anyway, those are like the three major things I wanted to talk about. They're all really good. There's books on all of them. If you want to hit up the library, um, I, if you want to hit up me, I have a lot of podcasts and things to recommend, but I think diversity is so important and there's so many documentaries, there's so many literature, there's so much everything written on it on why it's important, how it's important, how it's been shown to be important. Okay. Sorry if that was long-winded. <laughs> no, that's fine. Mark, did you have anything to add? No, that's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Can't add to the philosophy. <laughs> okay, you're serious. You're, you're okay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, okay. So definitely diversity is important. We know that there are, there, um, you know, we are all different, no doubt about that. Some of us are privileged. And 
privilege can also be, you know, defined in so many ways, because um, if we want to go back to the gift idea, there are gifts that some people have that I surely don't have that would, I would love, but I don't have them. And um, I'm not, um, you know, I, I don't envy somebody who has that gift. I actually admire them, but, um, you know, there are times, I think we probably do, um, we can, you know, have, have a little problem with what somebody has that we don't have. So, but we've talked about different experiences and there's, there's no doubt that we've all had different experiences in our lives for various reasons, different things that contribute to those experiences. So how do we build bridges? How do we bridge those gaps that do occur in, um, in a society today, period? There are certainly those that do exist. And so how, how do you think, what's a good way to start at least building, building those bridges or bridging the gaps, however you wanna um, say it? Yeah, I can start. Um... So I don't know a single person who's never done an icebreaker before. Um, an icebreaker, especially the kids listening in who are in high school going to college, you'll do an icebreaker for the first like month of college. It's just, it's so, it's, I don't like them, but I see the point of them. And what it is, is you're like, oh, my name, a fun fact, and like, you know, what I want to do, right? And that whole point of that is to offer something, right? I think the first, the first thing you have to do to build a bridge with someone is to take something from yourself and offer it, right? And I don't mean like you go volunteer, like that's, that's definitely a way to, you know, build bridges, but more of like, hey, I, my name is Victor and I love Dungeons and Dragons. I started it last, week, last year and a half now and I love playing it, right? That is offering something about myself that someone else can be like, hey, I also love Dungeons and Dragons. Like, do you like a paladin? Do you play as a, a rogue? Like, right, it's something that I, I have now created. I put something out there of myself, right? And it doesn't have to be something crazy. It doesn't have to be like my deepest secret, but just something like I offer something to this table and then someone else can either pick it up or offer something similar, right? If you're constantly, you know, think of it as a melting pot, right? If I'm putting something in, someone else can put something in all of a sudden we made a really nice soup, right? And that we could all take sips from. I think that's one of the first things you really have to do, right? Is offer something of yourself into the pot, the melting pot so you can eat some nice fondue or soup. And then the second thing is whenever you do it, I think it's always extremely important to be um, positively curious, right? Um, you know, I'm Hispanic. And I think when people ask me things about my culture, I love to answer, but I, there's different reasons why they ask. Right. If someone asks me something to kind of like, cause they're curious and they want to learn more and they want to be my friend. That's a great thing. You know, if they're like, Oh, Victor, like, can you tell me like, you know, you dance salsa. Can you tell me how like, how to like, yeah. Like I have been in so many quinceañeras my whole life. I have the basic steps of salsa down. Like, yeah, let's do this. But if someone asks me something and it's kind of coming from a place of like, like ingenuine curiosity, right. Cause they want to ask it because it's stereotypical. They want to ask it because it's, not to put me down outright, you know, there's these things called microaggressions where like you say something and they don't mean to be aggressive, but it, it does hurt me, right? Like I have crazy curly hair, my whole family does. If someone's just like, oh, like, like your hair looks all like weird, like that's mean, man. Like that's not a nice thing to say, right? Um, they don't, they might not come from it. They just think it's like, oh, it's a fun thing that I've never seen before, right? But they're not asking it to be my friend. They're saying it just to say it. Right. So I think if you're going to put something in that melting pot, you're going to offer something, make sure when someone else offers something, you're doing it and you want to be part of it for a very positive, like, I want to be your friend. Let me enjoy the soup with you rather than just poke at it. Right. I don't want to poke at the soup and not add anything to it. <laughs> always be curious, always add stuff to the soup and make it a very enjoyable soup for everyone. I don't know how that soup analogy came in there, but there, there it is. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> Oh, Mark, what about you? you? You have great metaphors. I feel like I never come prepared with these metaphors. I'm just, I'm floundering when I get to my question. How to build bridges. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the thing you hit on is like genuineness. And, um, you know, it go, goes back to openness, which we kind of started the conversation with. 
which is like, I mean, build, I think building bridges when someone has different experiences, it's kind of com like that question is already saying that we have some different thoughts on something. We, we're coming from a different place. And, you know, to resolve that, it's like we have to first we have to hear each other. Like, what is your place? OK, like, I hope you will listen to me, like telling you about my place. And then you, you have to you have to try and get it. Like, where are you coming from? I hope you try to listen to where I'm coming from. And I guess there's like some type of resolution and that is the bridge, like the thesis, antithesis, synthesis of philosophy <laughs> or psychology, I'm not sure. It's like- Philosophy, but yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like, you, we have to hear each other. We have to see each other and we have to not immediately like jump away, however that is. Like, you know, I don't think anyone will appreciate if I just come at them as soon as they have spoken their piece because I'm like, no, that's wrong. Like, that's like, I don't believe that that's awful. Like, they're not going to appreciate that. And like, at the same time, if like, I'm, if, you know, if I'm really defensive when someone is like, it's like, we don't want to hurt other people, but we also don't want to be hurt by other people. So like, I think just like the willingness to engage is what you need to build a bridge. Like, if something's uncomfortable, kind of like stick through it and just try to keep being part of that conversation. And I don't think, oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I'm sorry. Uh, it's just like, uh, as, as Margaret was saying, like, it is, you know, you don't want to be hurt and you don't want to hurt others, but it's also okay not to agree with others, right? Like, if it comes down to, you know, I hate this person, like, that's maybe not a great thing. But if it's just like, you know what, I don't, I don't agree with that point of view. That's okay. You, like just because you want to be diverse and just because you want to have as many opinions in the room as possible, doesn't mean you have to agree with all of them, right? That's the whole beauty of it. You know, differences make us great. And we don't have to always, you know, agree with the differences of opinion, right? Like I can, like I am raised in one, one religion. My best friend can have a completely different religion. We you know, like, are we gonna agree with which one's right? No, but just because we don't doesn't mean we can't be friends, right? And I think, you know, that's what Mark was touching on. I think it's super important. Like, I'm not gonna come at him. He's not gonna come at me. We're not gonna try to convert each other. We're not gonna try to be mean to each other. But like, just because, you know, we have this difference doesn't mean one of us has to accept the other one, right? We can stay different and still be friends and still go forward. Yeah, and I was going to say that um, you mentioned icebreakers, um, the beginning of, your um, answer to this question, Victor, and uh, I can't imagine, I can't imagine that you haven't been through icebreakers in various ways, but um, I hate them too. I really do. They always put me on the spot, but at the same time, it is a really good opportunity to get to know each other. So, but I wanted to talk a little bit about insecurity because I think a lot of times when we all have differences and we are in groups where we um, you know, may really strongly differ in our like of pizza or you know, um, our Dungeons and Dragons character or, um, sorry, Mark, I can't really think of anything off the top of my head that you've mentioned, but if there are instances where we can't, um, where we really you know, are struggling with even being able to voice those opinions, that, that, that's okay too, but don't let it close you down to the point that you never take part in something because if you never reach out and try, then you're really closing doors on potential great things, you know, that can be given to you in your life. And, um, but I, you know, the understanding of even as adults, even myself, okay, there are lots of things that I don't like to do. There are lots of things that, um, and I'm old, so it, there are lots of things that I am really uncomfortable with. Um, this is one of them, honest to God, is <laughs> sitting in front of a camera. But, um, you know, I have tried it, and um, y'all, you know, some of you watch, and that's a good thing. But I, you know, and, and it's hard for me to meet other people because I'm quite shy, but it doesn't mean that, you know, I can't, that 
And sometimes I may come across as a judgmental person because of that. But at the same time, I am open. I am trying to, you know, to learn more about others. But so don't let your insecurities hold you back either. That's, I don't, I don't know if that fits into what we're talking about or not, but that is something that as a, as a teenager, I don't, I don't think I probably would have been as open, you know, as I am as an adult. So sometimes you have to grow into some of what we're talking about too. Um, but trying even as a teenager is a good thing because it'll set you up for adulthood. It'll be easier as you, you know, as you grow and mature and age and get old like me. So anyway. I think as a tip for that, right? Like, I don't know if you guys, I talk so much. I am a huge talker. When I was young, when I was in high school, I never talked. I never said anything, right? I just, I was always very shy. I was always in my head. I was going to say the wrong thing. But my dad, you know, English is not his first language. So his English is broken a little bit. But he talks nonstop to everyone he sees. And I always ask him, I was like, how do you do that? How do you find things to talk about, random people? He's like, just start, right? And like, to me, I was like, that's such a dumb answer. Like, that, that means nothing to me. Just start talking. But like, honestly, he was right. Right. And then like, it's coming back like to the soup example and like the anchovy pizza. Right. You know, if you just, you know, go to one person and just like whispers like, Hey, I really don't like the anchovy pizza. They're like, Oh, I don't like it either. Right. And then all of a sudden two people, you know, maybe a third joins in and you guys order a separate pizza. Right. And then next time it comes a little bit easier. It's like going to that one friend like, Hey, no one likes the anchovy pizza. Make sure we order more. Right. Cause now you have, you got a little bit more confidence. You talked that one time. It doesn't have to be in front of a camera. It doesn't have to be in front of an audience. It can literally just be like, you know, going home and be like, you know, I don't know, your mom is making soup and you're like, hey, can I have, you know, some chips with my soup today? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, of course. And then now all of a sudden you eat your chips. Like, it's just something like, it can start super small. It just, you know, and almost, I would say 99% of the time, it's not going to be shot down. And if it is shot down, oh, well, I'm sorry, you know, it's, that can't be avoided, but like almost 99% of the time, if, if what you're saying is, you know, it's not going to be like, there's going to be someone who relates to it, someone who agrees with it, you know, and again, I never talked when I was a kid. I am 20, God, 27 now, 28, I can't remember. Oh my. I like to think I'm still like 14 in my head. I'm like, oh no, I'm so old. <laughs> No, I'm like, oh, no, yeah, you're I'm not. a teenager. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. And then, yeah, uh, again, I was never like this. And now I love talking and I want to do it for a living. So. And who knows what the, what the future holds, you know, all it takes is opening the door just a little bit and letting yourself out. So Mark, did you have anything to add to that? It's funny hearing that Victor didn't talk much when he was in <laughs> high school and now he talks a lot because I was like, I was like the opposite where when I was younger, I was so chatty. I was just like always getting in trouble for talking in class and talking too much. And then I like got to high school and college and I was like, you know, just kind of mellowed out and like listen more. <laughs> well, I'm... I'm very glad that you both talk as much as you do because you're doing a great job and you always have in every one of these sessions. So anyway, how can we have good learning conversations? Because I think that's where we're going now. We talked a little bit about this and kind of touched on it, I think, in our answers about building bridges. But I think now we can talk about um, good learning conversations. What are those and how do we create those? I can start with this. Um, first point I'm repeating because it's important is genuine listening. You know, that was part of building bridges. And I think that is hand in hand with having like learning conversations where we're trying to learn from other people's experiences. It's, you know, listening before speaking and maybe even like rethinking and reflecting before we're kind of jumping into comment. So a lot of listening. And um, I think another kind of like piece that sometimes gets talked about is like calling people in versus calling people out for things. So like if we're trying to learn about something or you wanna teach someone about something that, you know, like maybe is important to you that 
or like you feel hurt, you know, whatever the situation was and you want to tell someone something, um, you know, there's an idea that you can call them in, which is that like you're, you're, you're trying to like have a conversation about it. And kind of, it's like imagining you were going to sit down for a cup of coffee basically. And it's like friendly versus calling people out. You know, I think when we hear that, we almost think about the internet where there's this like anonymous, just like yelling at people, Facebook comments. And it, it, it's like, there's, there's not really the intention of ever having that person like be close to you in your life. It just feels very impersonal. And I think for the most part, calling out makes people who are doing it and people who are on the receiving end of it just not feel amazing because it doesn't feel like you're having a conversation. So it's like kind of the aspiration is that if you want to have a learning conversation, like really make it a conversation because it works better for everybody that way. And, you know, sometimes people don't want to necessarily educate other people about things. And like, I think that's okay. We're not obligated to teach people things, but if we want to have learning conversations, like we may as well kind of do it, do it well, if we're going to do it right. Exactly. And just listen, just listen to each other. Go ahead, Victor, what have you got to add? Yeah, um, I love that calling in versus calling out. We talked about, I think, in middle in medical school, it's the first time I heard about it, but it's a really good way to put it. Um, another way I've heard about it was um, the yes and instead of the no but. So when someone says something and you disagree with it, you're like, like oh, no, 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 because cause I believe in this, right? It's like, instead of saying that, be like, oh, I see your point. And I want to add this point as well, right? It is the, I'm going to add to this conversation rather than take you away from it, right? I think that's a very important um, aspect of learning, right? Because you want to be in there with the person, right? Kind of what Mark was saying, you want to join in the conversation rather than take them out. Um, it's another, like, I, I literally see myself catching words that way. If I say like, oh, but this, I'm like, oh, I am, I am disagreeing in a negative fashion. It's like, oh yeah, I see this. And how about this? You know, now I have now made a full conversation that we can actually go back and forth in. I, like it's literal words that I write in text and say that I'm like, oh no, I should change that. Um, another thing, I you know we talked about it before, but like the positive cooperative, positive curi curiosity rather. Um, it is the, I want to learn and I want to be part of this because I want to be your friend. I want to empower you. I want you to empower me, right? It's a curiosity and a learning that's actually fueled in love and appreciation and things of that nature, right? If you're going into things of, you know, I want to learn just because I want to know more for the sake of learning, that's not going to make the other person feel good, right? The other person's a person. They have emotions, they have a past, they have a history. Um, they're not just like a fact or a bullet point or something that you're like, oh, that's this. Like, no, 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 no. There's so much more to everything you do. Right. So I think what Mark was saying, if you slow down, if you if you take a second to be like, okay, if I say this, if I do this, what is it, what am I actually going to gain from it? Right. Am I actually showing the person that I care about them? Do I actually am I learning this and I'm going to say this so so we can be closer friends? Or am I just saying this to fill space? Right. Because you know, you're gonna go if you're in high school, if you're in college, if you're in middle school, if you're a young adult, or if you're an older adult, right? No matter where you go, there's gonna be someone different than you. And you're going to want to have a conversation, say it's like a lunch break or whatever, you're just sitting with someone random. You know, are you saying the things you're saying because you don't want it to be silent? Or are you saying them because you're actually curious? You know, if someone sees they're eating a, a strange lunch and be like, oh, that looks good. Like, what is that? Like, that's a really like, nice. And like, you can build a conversation and be like, you'd be like, oh, is that like this type of food? And you're like, no, like, why just single them out like that? Like, if you're curious about the food, make a comment why you're curious, not just like say it like that, right? It's like little things like that can go from a conversation of, of exclusion, of pushing them away to something that's a learning experience for both of you, right? And I think that's all gained from slowing down. Slowing down, doing what Mark says, calling in versus calling out, um, and coming from a positive place. You know, if you're always like, I wanna become better friends, I wanna become a better person, I wanna like learn more, I wanna be, you know, for the sake of helping out others, of being more close. Um, I think that's how to do it. Very good. Nothing to add to that. I don't anyway. Do you, Mark? Do you have anything that you'd like to add? Okay. No, All right, so 
what are some good books or resources where you can learn about social justice? Yeah, um, my favorite one was a gift from my uncle, um, who's also a lawyer. And he gave it to my sister, who's a lawyer. He also gave it to me because I think he just like, he's, a, he's an uncle who um, loves to read. So he just gives out books for Christmas and birthdays and everything. I have a stack of like 50 that I just haven't read. I love to read, I just don't have time. <laughs> but um, it was a new Jim Crow. I think that's a fantastic book. It talks about um, systematic oppression, um, especially for just us, because we're first generation Hispanic. So it's something really meaningful to me um, to read. My sister actually wrote her thesis in uh, college about it. Um, yeah, it's a very good book. There's also there's so many resources. I think another great one that's always available um, are TED Talks. Those are for free, those are online. There are so many different people with so many different backgrounds talking about things. Um, I s saw a uh, Asian American um, woman who is deaf, but she's a music composer, right? And she makes music for deaf people who are also Asian American. Like it's such like a niche type of music, but just seeing how she talked about it and like she was signing and there was an interpreter there too. So, but like half of her audience was also deaf. And it was just like, it was such a weird Ted talk. And like, I don't know how I stumbled upon it, but it was so impactful. And I was like, this is such like a niche, like audience, but it's just learning and like seeing something that like, I have never, not even remotely close to experiencing. I, you know, I'm not differently able like she is. I am, I, I am not a woman. I, I am not Asian American. Like I, so different, but I love music. And I was like able to connect to this random 15 minute TED talk from out of nowhere. And it was just like, wow, like things like that, right? So again, my favorite book uh, for diversity, I think is a new Jim Crow and then TED talks are just phenomenal. There's so many topics about literally everything. Like if you have a question on anything, there's a TED talk. And then also your local library, shout out. Michelle's yes, above my head in the sure. thing, so it's right there. <laughs> they definitely have many, many books. I'm you, sure we do. I'm sorry I didn't find any for this because I could have, but I didn't really have enough time to do that. I didn't know we were going to uh, touch on this, but I think it's a good thing. Yes, I'm certain that we could find something. Definitely, we've got a lot of resources here that talk about social justice and, and racism and all of that. Um, question for you, Victor, before Mark um, chimes in. Did she play? Did you hear any of the music that she was sharing? I was just, I would just be curious, you know, a deaf yeah. composer, I would think that would be, I'd love to hear what she had to offer. It was a lot of tonal sounds, right? So one thing I learned there was um, there's actually deaf concerts. Uh, I, th I think the actually the appropriate term is audibly different or aurorally different. Mm -hmm. um, I am not quite sure. And if I'm offending anyone, I'm very sorry. I will learn the correct terms for everything as I can. Um, but so it would be a lot of tonal sounds, right? Their concerts are mostly like deep bass mm -hmm. and like vibration. So it was, you know, I couldn't hear it well because I'm like doing this, but supposedly at the TED Talk area, like they had everyone hold the chairs and like touch the wall and stuff. And you can like feel the vibrations and it was supposed to represent a picture, the different vibrations, but it's still audio, right? But it's audio to, to touch to then imagery in the brain, mm -hmm. right? Because music's supposed to be, you know, audio to brain imaging, right? You're supposed to like feel something, you're supposed to hear, like see something and all that stuff and you listen to music, right? That's the, um, I, also, I also took music in college. So that's, it's called an uh, auroral perception, right? How we perceive and interpret music and whatnot. She was able to do it without actually hearing it, but just paying attention to the vibrations. Super cool. There's just so, it's, yeah, it's just amazing. Very fascinating. That would be, that's, that's incredible. And there, there's a gift that she's sharing. And even though it's probably something very different, she has stepped out of her comfort zone to share this with other people who then um, are, um, yep, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, privilege to be taking part in what she's sharing. So that wasn't the word I was looking for, but anyway, it works. <laughs> so Mark, did you have anything to add to that? Um, the question was good yeah, books yeah. or resources? <laughs> I'll second the new Jim Crow. Honestly, I read that and was very taken. I mean, I, I think in general, it's like a, you know, 
how, however you learn best, I think that is kind of can be applied to this, where it's like some people love seeing YouTube channels that kind of offer different perspectives on things. And then you can kind of be like, huh, I never thought about it that way. Other people love reading books, reading novels, like fictional work or non, you know, or nonfiction. I think other people just want to have conversations. Mm -hmm and like kind of get a broad like get a broad range of people's experiences and it's like you learn about different things in America or the world you know through like that kind of personal lens I, mean, I guess ideally it's like a combination you know we want to have like a good sense what is the what's going on in the world around us like what does it look like you know what's the state of things and then get like the personal you know personal experiences sure Yes, I would agree. Okay, so if you feel discriminated against, what should you do and who should you talk to? I can start. Um, so I think the first thing you got to do is talk about it with someone you trust, right? Um, because you can be discriminated against with so many, on so many different levels, right? It could be discriminated, like your sister can treat you differently, your parents can treat you differently, your friends, that can go bosses, co-workers, that can go to, you know, maybe systemic oppression. We're not gonna, we didn't touch on this here, um, you know, but there's many resources if you wanna learn about systemic oppression, it's kind of like what the new Jim Crow goes into, right? There's so many different levels of discrimination and oppression and feeling that your diversity is being ostracized rather than included, right? Um, so I think the first thing to do is find someone you trust and just kind of talk about it, right? You never want to hold that in. If you hold it in, it builds and it builds and it really weighs you down, right? Um, I, I'll use an example that like my dad kind of struggles with that because, you know, he says he's never been discriminated against, right? I'm like, Bob, you, you don't speak English well. I've, I've seen people laugh at you for your English. And he's like, no, I don't let it bother me. But then at the end of the day, like, I have seen him like talk to his friends and like, you know, be really upset about it. And I'm like, he says it on one level, but then he doesn't really fully acknowledge it on other levels. Right. And that kind of eats at him. And then he's been getting much better. Right. He is older. He's getting, you know, much wiser, I would say at his age, but he would hate me to call him an old man. But, um, you know, one thing that like I've done since a young kid is like, if I ever feel that way, I want to make sure I talk about it. I don't want things to build inside of me because that's going to build a resentment. You know, then I'm, when, it, when I go back to that soup pot, I'm not going to want to put anything in there, right? Because I felt pushed away. I don't want to add to that soup anymore. I'm done. I'm going to leave the room, right? And that's not, you know, maybe there's someone else who could benefit from what I would add, right? So first thing to do is find someone you trust, a friend, a colleague, you know, maybe a therapist, whatever it is to talk about what's going on and how you feel inside. I think that's super important. You know, again, I want to do psychiatry, so I'm very much into feelings, but um, I just think it's so important to always talk about how you feel. Second thing is leadership, right? If it's, if, it, if you're at a job and someone treats you unfairly, um, you know, someone is saying comments about you that you don't like, right? There's always, you know, in school there, you can reach out to a principal, you can reach out to a teacher, you know, that should never happen in those scenarios. If it's in a job, there's HR, there's your boss, there's so many, like, there are checks and balances that that should never be happening anymore. And it's really difficult to go and say like, hey, this person said this about me. This person is treating me unfairly. It's very, very difficult. I'd, I'd want to acknowledge that takes a lot of strength and a lot of courage. You know, that's why I think you should always tell your friend and like, you know, reach out to a confidant to be like, hey, like, I want to talk, I want to say something, but I want to make sure, you know, like you have my back that like, you're going to emotionally support me when I go through this because it's always hard. But again, it should never happen. No matter where you are, it could be, you know, a friend, it can be, you know, a job, it can be at school. There's always someone that you can talk to and be like, hey, like, that's not, that's not going to work. Like, that's not okay. Like, just because I'm this way, you cannot treat me this way. Right. Um, and the last thing, there's like national organizations. I'm not going to get into all of them, but like a big one is like the ACLU that fights for people's rights. Right. They're pretty big. Um, you know, my sister volunteered before she became a lawyer for the state of New York. Um, I did a little volunteer for them and they like, they take on cases. If you are older and someone did something bad to you and you need to sue them, like I'm not going to go into all that stuff. I think it's geared more, not towards that age, but like just to acknowledge that there's a lot of organizations on a national level who are willing to fight, 
who are like, no, like that is not okay, right? There was in Jersey, there was a school that wasn't teaching English to Spanish speakers, right? The ACLU stepped in like, no, no, that's not okay. Like these kids are here, you know, they have their documentation, like everything is, you cannot stop teaching them, right? Stuff like that. That's an extreme scale. I don't know if that's what we're trying to get into here, but for anyone listening in, if that ever happens, there are huge organizations full of lawyers, full of very, very smart people who will help take care of all that. But on a more personal level, I think you should find someone you trust to always speak about stuff, never let it fester inside because those feelings are not okay, right? It's not okay for someone to treat you bad. And then leadership to make sure when you're working somewhere, it's not gonna be a place you hate working because someone's treating you unfairly. Good. Mark? You're, you're on top of all these answers. I'm like, okay, repeat, repeat. Um, <laughs> people you trust. Yeah. And I, I think like, if I guess, depending on the circumstance, sometimes it, it can be appropriate to like talk to a person who you felt like, you know, the person who impacted you in a certain way, but it depends. I wouldn't say always talk to that person, I guess it depends what, what happened. Like if, if there's some threatening scenario, you probably just don't even want to deal with whoever is hurting you or threatening you or like whatever is going on and making you feel really bad. If there's something light, um, you know, it can be possible to turn it into like a, a learning scenario. I, I would say that I don't think there's necessarily an obligation to walk this path because if, if we feel real, like if we've been hurt, we're not obligated to, to be the ones to extend the hand, but you know, sometimes that's an option. I think that the main thing is really just talk to someone we trust and let it out, like Victor was saying. So it's not like building, just building an intensity. Right. Okay, so that's actually our last question. So I think what we can glean from here today is that no matter where we are, we need to be open-minded about who we are and who other people are when we encounter them. I think we've also, first of all, got to understand that we all are different for various reasons. We've all had different experiences. We all come from different backgrounds. We've all had different privileges or um, we, we, we come from you know, different regions. We'd come from different countries. There's just so many differences. So many physical capabilities or incapabilities. We've got just, numerous ways that we can be different from each other. So, but that doesn't make that person who's different, somebody that we can't befriend or somebody that we can't be kind to or somebody that we really wanna just shut the door on completely and don't wanna let them into our lives at all. We never know that that person actually could be somebody who could bring us an, an incredible you know, gift of happiness or, or love or whatever. Um, so we've got to learn to build bridges. We've got to bridge those gaps in, in, all that, um, in all that we can learn from each other. So sometimes there's a lot of fear in doing that. Overcoming those fears actually are, that's probably essential. And that's undoubtedly essential. You've got, to, you've got to try to step out of yourself and overcome the fears and take the risks, take the risks, say what you've got to say. Um, say you don't like the pizza or whatever. <laughs> um, have good communication. Conversations. Conversations are two-way streets. They're not only talking, they're also listening. In fact, probably listening is more important than the talking in some cases. And, you know, sometimes I don't do that very well. I'll admit that. But, um, Anyway, that's where it's all got to start. We've got to just drop the guards and learn to communicate with each other, learn to listen. And a lot of times, like I said, at the very beginning of all of this, um, that our differences, what did I say? Let me see. <laughs> um, in learning to communicate, we, 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 oh, when we start to really communicate, listen to each other's passions and interests is when we can finally realize, hey, they aren't that different than I am after all. And that's, that's really you know, the most important place to start is just communicate, step back, 
Don't be so quick to respond. Don't be so quick to become defensive because I think that's another thing that we all do. And I think fear actually prompts that more than anything. And just, you know, work at um, trying to be understanding. Does that kind of summarize what we've talked about? I think so. Perfect. Okay. And we've got the resources, the new, the new Jim Crow and talking to each other. There are other, you know, places that, and definitely if you're looking for something on social justice or anti-racism or anything like that, give the library a call. We do have lots of books available for um, curbside pickup that you can um, use. And um, I think that's about it for tonight, guys. I, again, am blown away by your willingness to share. And if you want, you know, I mean, these two guys are perfect examples of what it means to come outside yourselves and share deeply who you are, because they do that and they do it very well. And they've done it for several sessions. So anyway, um, can't tell you enough how much we appreciate what you are doing for our library and for our community. Um, and we're, we're looking forward to, you know, we're looking forward to seeing this unity build in our community. We really are. And I know our puzzle project is one tiny little step, but here's the thing. It's one tiny little step and that's the way things have got to move in small increments. They're not going, we're in stock. None of this is going to be over immediately. We've all got to do our own thing in our own little part of the world take a little step to reach out and talk to somebody at school that maybe you've, you know, had a bad opinion of because maybe, maybe they really need to know that somebody cares. Who knows? Um, unity is just being able to build where we're at and, and go from there. So make sense. Anything either of you want to add? I just always like to make the plug that, um, you know, if you guys have any questions, literally anything, the library is here for you. You can reach out to them. And they, if you have questions for us, you can, they can forward out questions to, from them to us, uh, Mark and I myself. Um, you know, we're here for you guys. We're here for the community. This is what the whole, this whole motive is about, right? So if you have any questions, if you have things you want to talk about, things, you know, just because you're listening to the series, you know, doesn't mean it has to end here. You know, we're all in this together, right? That's the whole point of unity, it's the whole point of diversity. Um, you're never alone. And if you feel alone, just reach out. Absolutely. Mark? I hope, I hope someone reaches out. It'll be fun. <laughs> there yeah. you go. Oh. There you have it, right from their mouths. <laughs> It's what they're looking for. So anyway, I hope everybody has a great evening. Thank you so much again for this time. And um, we look forward to seeing you again, hopefully next month. We've got to talk about that. Um, anyway, and for those of you interested in joining in our puzzle project, please give us a call. And, uh, and if you want any other resources, give us a call. We'll be happy to get those for you. So anyway, everybody have a great evening. We'll talk to you again soon. Okay. See you later. Bye-bye. Yeah.